Hi, I'm Craig Tomler from Startup Stories, and I'm here with Michael from BizBudget to actually discuss his startup story. Hi. Yeah, so Michael, tell me how you got into startups. Well, I was I originally worked with well, for many years at a business partner, and we worked together doing customized software and built a, uh, a couple of solutions uh, that we used to sell, and eventually got to the point where we'd been together for about thirteen odd years and had different ideas and different people were getting involved and it was a, a bit of a fork in the road and it was a chance for me to try and develop some of my own ideas. So I'd sort of had experience in the in the, uh, in the the sort of business arena yep. but with someone else and that was, um, that was great and I really enjoyed it and I got a lot of experience but then I realised too that we both, well we, for, for various reasons we both decided that we'd be better to do th uh, what we wanted to do. And in that case, I thought, okay, well, I had a great idea to use the software that we developed for businesses and, and make that as a software as a service okay. product. Great. So that was my motivation. And, and I would come to the, a point where there was yeah, a big fork in the road and I thought, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. It's going to take some time off and just uh, redevelop the software and make it as a, as a package that anyone can can access on the web and, and see how that was going to go. You know, it was an idea that I'd always had and wanted to see what was was going to become of it and I did it. Great. So so how long ago did you start? Well that was about um, three years ago. Mm -hmm. So about three years ago I started redeveloping the software and I was doing a little bit of work on, as well, uh, consulting work, but I mainly spent most of my time, I, I shifted from that to just doing full time on the startup, yep. um, just developing the software and setting the business up really, everything that's involved in that. So there's a lot a lot that I learned along the way that mm -hmm. you know it was involved in getting that to a point where it was a saleable product. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then going out and then realizing once you've got this product there, then you need to start talking to real people. Yes. <laughs> it, not all. Not you know. You. I. I there was a, a perception, I guess, that the web would take care of a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you still need. To, I felt that I still needed to go and see people because it was still a business tool that people needed to be comfortable with and encouraged to use. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about this budget and what it actually does. Okay, so it's a it's primarily a business budgeting uh, software. Um, what it enables a business to do is to uh, collect and, and view and consolidate uh, budget information for their business. Mm -hmm. And there are there's a, quite a lot of software out there that does that sort of plays that role and does that. Um, and there are varying levels of it. A lot of businesses will use something like Excel, a Microsoft product Excel, to build their own budgets because budgets have become a very are a very unique um, piece of software or a unique process within a business. Mm -hmm. um, and and smaller businesses will typically do that themselves and manage something themselves. Um, there is software that's quite affordable mm -hmm. um, that doesn't always do what a lot of businesses want, and then the, that the spectrum goes right up to a. Uh, you know, spending millions of dollars enterprise platform. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a there was a real gap in the market. We developed the software and sold it to a number of um, as a corporate product that was heavily customised for mm -hmm. each client. We'd done that in my previous business for uh, large federal government and um, state government private businesses, but there was a lot of work required to do that. Yes. And each customer was very different. Um, and I thought that. And there was also a big gap between the sort of medium business and, and small business really had nothing um, other than wanting to do something themselves and the, most of the products were fairly, weren't fantastic that were mm -hmm. in, the, in the bottom level. But even the last, you know, large business, there's a big shortfall there in what they were being given and, and the, the, the potential, I guess, to give them a, a, an afford, more affordable option. So that got me to thinking, okay, well, software as a service is becoming more accepted. People are happy to leave information in the cloud, so to speak. So I thought, time to develop an application that people can go online, set themselves up, make, reduce the amount of effort that's required, because a lot of the consulting time was in guiding people through setting it up, mm -hmm. and configuring it, yep. and then the training. Um, so it was really to simplify that part of the process and make it as a tool that anyone could just go online, sign up for free, and, and try it out. Right. So, so basically, that that was the problem you were you were solving was that was that gap in the market with good good products for I suppose both smaller businesses and a little bit for larger businesses. Yeah, very much. And no one was doing it online. No one's doing it so that you could, no. you could go online. A and very few were doing it so that you could essentially do it yourself. 
yes. know, was was always required assistance by a company or a very consultant. Very bespoke. V- yeah. Very bespoke. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I guess also the process would be could potentially be complex. Mm-hmm. So having people help guide through it, but it was reducing that complexity. So or making it as simple as possible, mm-hmm. so that people wouldn't find it difficult to to. You know, people I think are a bit smarter now in using software, particularly web-based stuff. Everyone's comfortable with that. So, getting making something that was easier, not not going to be the fit for everybody, no. but certainly try and fill a gap in the market. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And uh, so, what challenges did you encounter as you you sort of moved? Like you talked about one being the you built the product, then you realised you had to market it, and that was there was a <laughs> challenge there. Yeah, very much. What, what what else have you sort of identified along the way? Uh, well, all those things are the big ones, you know, trying to find people who would be interested, trying to find, um, trying to engage with interested people. Mm-hmm. Um, then I found that it was, wasn't was too difficult to, f- to get some amount of, of flow of customers once you started being more active online. Mm-hmm. You know, you, people would typically, um, you, you would get to the marketplace a bit better. But then what I realised was that what you were getting to probably a, a different market as well because yes. I was more interested in the... The business that would be, um, that I guess would have some understanding of what they were looking for, but I also needed feedback from people, mm-hmm. uh, and I, that was the hard, the hardest part of it, trying to get feedback from potential clients to see because this was something fairly new. You know, I noticed a lot of the people signing up were small businesses, yes, and potentially people who didn't have much understanding of budgets, and they probably wanted more help on the budget side than they mm-hmm. necessarily did on the software side. So I was trying to engage with them and get information from them to, to improve the product. Um, and then, yeah, obviously getting out to a, to a broader market and more people, but still trying to get the right people as well. Yes. Not, I, I wanted it to be for anybody <coughs> who wanted to use it, but I wanted to make it easy enough because I noticed along the way that in the sign-up process, people would drop off at various yes. stages. And I was trying to work out, okay, why did they, why, weren't, why didn't they go through with it? And why, when they started using it, didn't they follow it through? Mm-hmm. They were some of the bigger challenges. So really just finding, engaging with clients. Um, because on the corporate level, it was a bit easier to try and engage with consultants or firms who would potentially be a reseller. And they, you could, you know, you, you could see, you get feedback directly from them. Yes. Then, whereas customers online uh, tend to um, be, a, well, I, f- I found that there was a challenge in trying to work out how to. Yeah, well, they'll, they'll try something, but there's very low engagement with it. Yes. And, if it and if it doesn't immediately match what they need, they'll jump to the next yes. course, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so um, how has sort of that interaction, that feedback that you have gotten shaped how you develop the product? Well, it, it helped a lot of the, um, I mean, you know, you try and get the product to, to market as best as possible, but it helped with a lot of the um, fine tuning and, and mm-hmm. um, some of the problems that existed because you can you do a, a testing, but being one person, you you tend to go over the things that you would do, not yes. what other people would do. Yes. So every piece of information I got from people was always you know, hugely helpful, not only in finding problems and things that didn't work properly, but also in, in realising, okay, well, this is the angle that people are coming at it from, mm-hmm. trying to make every little piece of it, of it um, better. But be, being a, a larger piece of software, which is which had a lot of functionality in it, it it's such a, it was such a big job just to maintain what was there um, and trying to add new features was always a, a, a struggle as well. And then right. trying to do your, you know, trying to separate your day or your week so that you spend a little bit of time on marketing, a little bit on the product and a little bit on, you know, business. Well, the business admin. itself. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. So yeah. all of that was always a, a challenge and still is. Trying okay. to juggle well, and money too. You know. Yes, yes. Paying, because you need enough money bills. coming in to, and at the right times to then be able to put it out again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, what have you learnt on the journey that particularly stands out? Uh, well, definitely the the time. You know, you can't expect something to. I, I you, I didn't have a, a, an expectation that things would happen immediately, but I I figured that I would, with the effort, you'd be able to see some. Growth or some re, you know, engagement and, and um, some of what you were trying to achieve reasonably quick, but I've realised that time is a big part of that. You know, being able to get genuine customers and genuine leads that that takes time and, and, and yes. spending your time finding the right websites to, to write, you know, to engage with and, and advertise and, and talk about your product with and that um, and where to spend money. You know, yes. everyone's happy to. Particularly in sales and marketing, everyone's happy to, 
to uh, help you spend your money, but it's not always worthwhile. And you, you, you know, a lot of things you try, and you realise afterwards, oh, that probably wasn't a good idea. Yeah. Like, like, man, that's marketing and sales a big part. You know, a lot of the websites that would advertise software as a search engine for software. You know, some of those have free options, but then other a lot of them would then have a, a pay option. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you, the value of those is, is hard to gain. So, so what type of approach have you found works best for, for marketing the product? Um, mostly um, uh, having a good website, mm -hmm. definitely, because and a good interface with the software. Um, I guess there's, uh, there's a number of stages, you know, engaging with people initially, getting their interest or finding people who might be interested in it, engaging with them so that they feel as though, well, this might be an option for me, and through the website, you know, being able to offer a... Um, a website that that, ha that that looks like you're a big business because yes. you, you can't you know that's as, as that's like your shop front I guess as a particularly as a, a software um, business so having that you know look as good as possible and and looking at other websites the big businesses who've obviously got dedicated people to that and spend lots of money on it but trying to cut <laughs> do that as cheaply as possible you know but I made an explainer video and I it took me quite a while to do that and find someone who'd do it pretty cheaply and I did the voiceover and I did the script and I did the storyboard and everything and but it came out quite good and you know but I had to great. send it to family and friends and say you know what do you think of this mm -hmm. does it look all right yeah great okay and did a couple of versions mm -hmm. but, but it was you know it took a while to get to the point where I found something that was affordable but looked okay as well and then again and with a website you know you've got to constantly be doing stuff on there that that um, you know changing your message putting new detail on there so people can see if they're if they're returning yes what what's you know that you're not a stagnant website and, and also you know trying to get you know new people going through um, different avenues again a lot of the referral websites software referral websites trying to find out do they have an option that's free or if you're listed with them and paid money is it going to be valuable and, and measuring in that the good thing about the web is you can measure things a bit better you know you can see how many hits the website's getting and where they're coming from mm -hmm. and trying you know social media setting up a Facebook account Twitter account and then thinking of things to, to put on them yes because that alone is you know a, a big effort yeah well I, I do a lot with social media and and it really does require a, a very solid commitment and you really have to plan ahead yeah exactly yeah. you don't want to look like you know no this is my my the start you know, you don't want to look like there's one subscriber on your Twitter account because no. that doesn't look great. Same with you know Facebook. If you're not, you know, if you haven't got a lot of likes, you people kind of that's an immediate impression. And actually, one website that I signed up for as a, a search engine for software, mm -hmm. they listed the number of likes and, and followers you had right uh, on on your profile. Yes. So immediately you think, well, gosh, if if someone comes to your <laughs> piece of software and says one and one, <laughs> you're not. People, I, I would think that's you know pr a pretty good measure. And software is a very much a you know if everyone else, someone else, if, if everyone else is using it, it quickly becomes a, a sort of herd mentality. People will go and yes. try it then. But if you've got no one using it, it's easy for people to yeah to, to pass over. Off. So yeah. it's trying to find ways around that. You know how do you get build that up? So building, looking at one, yes. but then also messaging. You know you don't you don't want to be sending out twi you know tweets that are just meaningless or mm. people kind of think oh well, that's just something for the sake of. Yes. You know, tweeting people are bombarded already, you don't want to yeah. don't want to murder them with it. So so what would you do differently over the last three years? Oh, what God. would you have done differently, I should say? Oh look, I think a lot of it's been a great learning experience. I don't mind the fact that I've made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of time on it. I probably would have um, I'd probably dedicate a lot more time to trying to in, uh, and 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 this is something I'm trying to do a lot more now, is 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 provide some genuine information for potential clients and be yes. a, a source of information for people um, to, to try and become more of a matter expert as a business so that people will you know organically I guess come to the website not mm -hmm. be not see an ad come up and think or Google ad or see that you know, everyone knows now when you're at the top of searches if you're an ad or whether you're a genuine yes. so you know before you could kind of pay for that now yes. it's okay well I want to be something that people um, you know, we'll reference and, and, and talk about and you'll engage with people and write articles. So trying to get more of that and engaging with people so that they say, oh, yeah, well, this this business looks like they know what, they, they can help me and they've got information, I want more. Yes. So setting that kind of... Becoming more of a subject matter expert rather than just a vendor. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. Being, being just a vendor, you know, then you've, you've you, you know, I, I try to get some relationship with some 
potential resellers, um, but as, a, as a, an online product, you know, not many people are going to be necessarily resellers unless there's a, a value to them, and there isn't really. Yeah. So it's in the other style of product where it's a customised product. But yeah, engaging with them, um, mm. with people more. Yeah. Oh, great. So, um, would you do it again, knowing what you know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I've I've enjoyed definitely enjoyed the the. the the experience and I learned so much you know and being part of things like Entry 29 was fantastic you know the number of people I met here um, at Entry 29 that were just you know doing a similar thing they weren't necessarily doing you know making a piece of software or involved in business software or you know it could be anything but to see people and you don't think you kind of think this is a bit of a cliche or, or, or a, you know it's easy for everyone to say but it's true you know it was true I found a lot of people that you learn a lot from just from what they're doing and it kind of reinforced what you were doing oh yeah yes. I'm not crazy <laughs> that other people are doing something and and getting a new idea like learning what reinforcing what you're doing mm -hmm. but also learning from others yes you know that was a big part of it and m myself too you know I, then you can apply everything a lot of things you've learned mm -hmm. to other scenarios you know I found that I all of a sudden a lot of people I know who were had a business or had uh, were thinking about starting one up you just kind of say oh well, look you know if you want a logo I know somewhere you can go get a a good logo designed or I can help you with a website or refer you to a few places to do things. Yep. All, all that sort of stuff, you've, all of a sudden you've, you kind of do become a bit of a jack of all trades in the business side of things, but that's a, a benefit as well, you know, because you, you've, not, and that knowledge goes with you everywhere then when you're, yes. when you're wanting to do that again somewhere and you think sort of more laterally too, you know, you, you are the one that has to fix the problem. Yes. If there's a problem that comes up, you, you, you have to essentially make the decision yourself as to what you want to do and that might mean talking to others and drawing on their knowledge or you know finding something somewhere so yeah. that was that and that alone is worth the, the time oh definitely yeah as a solopreneur that's i think one of the biggest challenges that i've always yeah. uh, seen and and had other people talk about is that you know if you end up being isolated uh it starts becoming a problem to self to continue to have the motivation to deal with some of the decisions you need to make. So having a network that you can um, basically go to people who've done it before, have subject matter expertise in certain areas, uh, it really does magnify and accelerate what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. And look, I, I was working at home for a long time, and yep. that was a real challenge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't see it because you're busy doing stuff, but then you realise, well, I'm not socialising, I'm not talking to others, I'm not keeping up to date with things. It's just small conversations, you know, I'd find when I was... Then when I was part of Entry 29 and there were people you, in daily conversation, you might have a break for lunch and just talk to someone and they might just mention something and you think, oh, that sounds interesting, I'll look that up. Very simple things, you know, might, might only be, you know, something that's not even work-related, you know, yeah. where they're going on the weekend or some, something that they're using or, or something that they're doing or where they've come from or where they're going to. You know, the little bits and pieces always helped and, and that's why I think, you know, as you said, being a, a solo entrepreneur, very... Is very um, uh, can be can can become very sort of uh, you know you become very introverted and, um, and, and you you not or not necessarily always introverted but you become very um, uh, removed from the outside world and you forget that even going to a normal nine to five job and just saying to someone hi how are you going yes. how was your weekend yes there's no one there doing that yes which is and I'm a quite a social person I I found that hard that's why coming to something a collaborative place where there were lots of people. It just even that, even that, just being out coming in the morning and saying hi to a few people. Yes, it just makes that difference. Very and, and also, you feel as though you're at work. Exactly. Yes. And, yes. and that's right. And I, I really found my productivity was went, went up a lot because at home you you wouldn't necessarily always be distracted, but you you would just do other things. You'd fill mm -hmm. fill little bits of time in with things that weren't focused. Whereas when you came to somewhere like Entry Twenty Nine, you'd log in at nine do your work, have a break for lunch, finish at five and go home. Yes. And, and you didn't have to feel like you spent more, spend more time at night doing catch-up things. You know, yeah. you just, I, I try to dedicate a solid you know, eight hours, mm -hmm. do what I need to do. And I was very productive in that time. Yep. That's where I got a lot of my um, stuff done. Yeah, yeah. That, that takes a fair amount of discipline too, though, when mm. you don't have a boss or somebody, yeah. you know, threatening, you know, we won't pay you if you don't show up, that sort of thing. So you do have to have some self-discipline as well yeah. to, to impose that. Um, how, how, how did you find that, you know, shifting out of, I suppose, an environment where at least you were working with a business partner, yeah. so you had somebody, you can mutually hold each other accountable yes. to working on your own? Yeah, I found that very di different. 
and you, you definitely need the self discipline. But it's more it's more the reinforcement. You know, you, you lose that ability to say to someone, you know, he, he's I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Is it, am I is that a good idea? <laughs> mm. You know, there's no one to bounce those ideas off and just say, yeah, that sounds great. All right, great, I'll do it. You kind of might ponder it for a bit longer and go, oh, I don't know whether that's a good idea or not. And you and you 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 probably tend to make the mistake yourself and then yes. go, that wasn't a great idea. And, and, and as I said, things like spending money was a big one because not getting a lot of money coming in, um, you know, made it difficult then. How much, okay, well, so how much do I try and spend on trying to get a grant or trying to find yes. people who'll, uh, you know, uh, people who'll potentially become a, a, a venture capitalist, you know, someone who'll, who'll potentially invest in the business or should I be looking to, to sell part of the business or look at, yep. at, at another way of gaining some income? Because, you know, as I said before, it's a slower, Process to get to get customers on board, and, and I think there's a probably a hill you've got to get over before you people sort of go, oh yeah, this is great. Yes. You know, as I read a great article, and then reading articles too, I read a great article and people were referring to those recently about a, a lady, and I forget her name, but she said uh, her overnight success took 15 years. Yes. <laughs> I, I love that because that's you can see that that's it's just that persistence, just that you know, and that's what I've realised really is that it's not. You're not wasting time, even if nothing's occurring, or you're not getting too far. You're making mistakes. You're not wasting time. It's just that it's that persistence and the belief in what you're doing, and that you just got to keep doing it, and, and and try not to think of okay, let's look at the people who've got uh, full-time jobs and nine to five. You know, they don't like their job, but their after hours is, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's kind of the other way around when you're an entrepreneur. You know, the jobs you love because you're doing, you're very passionate about it, but then after hours you kind of think, oh gosh, we need, yes. we've got to pay the bills. Yes. And, and, you know, you're not going on holidays and you're not buying a new car and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But it's all part of the journey and I'd like to think, you know, you're going to be getting somewhere eventually with it. Mm. So um, you've bootstrapped yourself, I'm presuming, for most of it. Have you actually gotten funding through other sources as yet or that's still to come? Yeah, no, that's, I've, um, yeah, and that's, that's a good question <laughs> because I guess I've always thought about that. Mm -hmm. well, well, how much of the business do you try and um, sell, I guess? Or hang on to. Exactly, yes. or hang on to. Um, and you don't want to have 100% of nothing, but you also don't want to just um, involve other people necessarily just for the sake of it. And I've really tried to just hold on to it myself. You know, I've kept costs really at a very bare minimum, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and that's been great, but then what I've realised, where I realise the shortfall is, is in going out and engaging with people. And to do that, you need other people. Yes. And the other people need to be engaged. So there some, needs to be some motivation for them to say, you know, have you ever thought, if you, if you need, if, this is, if you've got a problem with budgeting, have you had a look at this? Yes. So that's what I've started doing over the last year, um, which has removed me a bit from the focus on the business mm -hmm. as a software as a service product. So it's still that's still churning away, but I haven't dedicated to just trying to grow that. And yes. now I see, okay, well I've got a, I you can use that. The, the fantastic thing is I've got something there that I can use as a referral, yep. and people can go and say, yeah, you want to try it out? You can go and sign up online for free. Mm -hmm. And you know, here's a group of consultants who are interested in it, uh, who are resellers, and and they'll help you with it. And so the balance is okay. Well, how much they want more? You know, they it's for for them yes. to go out and re, be a reseller. Because we're engaging with you early, you know, we kind of want to share in that because we see a value and mm -hmm. if we can build that as part of our business as well. So I've really tried to hold off on it and I'm hoping that that will remain um, for a while. But yeah, I, I think down the track eventually, you, of course, you have to consider it because once you start getting up, you need the so many different tasks and skills that you need. You know. Well, it's a, it's a scaling challenge. Exactly. You know, you, you have to scale somehow and whether that comes through cash flow or whether that comes through capital, you know, injections, whether it comes through bank loans or, you know, there, there are a variety of, you know, funding sources. It's not all just, you know, angel then VC. But um, at some point, you know, if you want to grow beyond a certain point, you're going to need some kind of you know, either the cash flow or some investment into the business. Exactly. So I know, I know I, that's the that's the real balance. And now I'm coming. I can see that I'm getting to the point now where, you know, really having a, a venture capitalist of of, of some sort mm -hmm. is going to be something I need to seriously consider eventually. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, you know for your insights today, Michael. It's great to hear about uh, Biz Budget and where you're going. And right. I wish you all the best into the future. Thanks so much, Greg. Yeah, Appreciate you. your time.